Welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. In the last several weeks, we've been talking about neuroinflammation and how different environmental triggers, food, and so forth uh, affects uh, inflammation of the brain. Today, I'm going to go ahead and summarize some of that. And if you want more details about each individual subject, you can go back to previous weeks and watch those videos. So let's get into it. So a summary of neuroinflammatory triggers. What are some of the triggers that can uh, impact neuroinflammation? One is lack of sleep. Sleep or cortisol patterns um, due to maybe sugar dysregulation or insomnia can significantly impact and trigger neuroinflammation. Dietary proteins, things like gluten and dairy, right? Or if you have a specific food allergy, certain proteins can create inflammation and, and, and trigger uh, brain inflammation, right? Going over here, infection. So infection is um, common, uh, but there are a lot of um, stealth infections, things that you, you don't really think about things like Lyme disease, a co-infection of Lyme disease. Um, sometimes it's Epstein-Barr or, or cyclomegalovirus. So there are these viruses and, and pathogens that can significantly impact uh, the brain because of that low-grade inflammation. Chemicals, whether it's herbicides, pesticides, um, dry cleaning products that they use chemicals to do, um, any type of paint thinners and so forth, so if you work in a certain industry with more chemical exposure, certainly it can be a trigger. Inflammatory disease, any type of autoimmune disease, right, um, can create immune dysregulation and cause swelling. And that swelling will eventually lead to brain inflammation or low-grade brain inflammation. It will start to impact how your brain functions. Diet, um, unfortunately in the United States, a lot of people are used to having fast food, right? Convenience, um, having cereal in the morning, right? With milk and then having a sandwich uh, with deli meats and, you know, a, a roll. And then for dinner, if it's convenient, pizza or pasta because it's simple to cook. Then dietary proteins you know, or inflammatory proteins can create triggers. Overtraining, and so this is a, a thing that we talk about often, is um, when you have inflammatory processes and you overtrain, right? You push your body beyond what it's capable of doing because your mental fortitude is very strong. It can create inflammatory processes. So people who do, you know, 15 miles a day uh, to train for a triathlon, and then they go for a swim in the morning, and then in the evening, they'll go, you know what, I need to get my bike uh, miles in today. And they keep pushing their bodies and they overtrain. So when they overtrain, it starts to break down your tissues and create some inflammation, eventually affecting your brain. Um, stress. Stress is a huge factor. Um, psychological stress, physical stress, emotional stress, bad relationships. Um, these are all uh, cortisol impacting uh, the brain and how the brain talks to your gut and how gut dysbiosis will lead to inflammatory processes. So this is kind of this seesaw or this vicious loops that can occur. So when we look at all these different triggers, you have to ask yourself, what do I have? Do I have sleep issues? Do I have blood sugar dysregulation? Do I have poor diet? Am I overtraining? Is my relationships really bad? Uh, you need to get out of those types of bad relationships. Infection, dietary proteins, and lack of sleep. These are all factors or triggers that can create low-grade inflammation and create brain fog, brain fatigue, Alzheimer's, and so forth. So it's very important to figure out what your triggers are to help yourself. Okay, my name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.